Hello everyone, this is Yong from Your Korea Friend. Are you planning a trip to Korea? Looking for a city to visit other than Seoul? Then watch this video. Today's content is introducing other city content. It's going to be about a city where the thousand year history remains. It's Gyeongju. If you haven't seen the last video about places to visit in Gyeongju, then please pause and watch that video first, then watch this video. Okay, let's get right into it. By the way, I'll introduce an easy way to travel around Gyeongju comfortably at the end of this video, so make sure to check it out. About Gyeongju. Gyeongju is a city located in Gyeongsang province. Uh, it is a coastal city next to the sea, Pohang above, Ulsan below, and Yongcheon on the left. As Gyeongju is the city with the largest number of world cultural heritage sites in Korea, you can see its long history. Also, it was built as first Korea's tourist city. Many people visit Gyeongju. It is a city where most Koreans would have visited at least once for their school field trips during school years. History Gyeongju is also known as the capital of Thousand Year Silla. The meaning is that before current Republic of Korea, there was the Joseon Dynasty, before that, the Goryeo Dynasty, and before that, the Three Kingdom period. During the Three Kingdom period, there were Goguryeo, Baekje, and Silla. Among them, Silla used Gyeongju, which was called Seolabeol back then, as its capital for a thousand years. So the thousand year history of Silla is intact in Gyeongju. Therefore, many of the cultural assets you will see in Gyeongju come from Silla period. Also, Gyeongju is called the history of Korean tourism because Bomun Tourist Complex, which is in Gyeongju, was built as very first tourist destination in Korea. Today, currently, Gyeongju possesses so many cultural assets that the entire city can be said to be a living museum. Uh, it does not end there. Even today, new cultural assets are still being discovered and restored. That is why the entire city of Gyeongju is designated as a world cultural heritage. On the other hand, because of that, there are many restrictions on urban development in order to preserve history. Therefore, Gyeongju is not well industrialized like Seoul and Busan. However, it continues to develop as a tourist destination. What to expect? In Seoul, you can see a lot of history about the Joseon dynasty. Uh, but in Gyeongju, you can see a lot of history about Shilai dynasty. Uh, you can see similar yet different architecture and cultural assets from the Joseon dynasty and the Shilla dynasty. Also in Gyeongju, you can try on Shilla clothes which are different from Hanbok that you can try on in Seoul. Also, like I've said, as it is the Korea's first tourist destination, you can enjoy leisure activities around the lake and visit the theme park. Overall, you can expect a thousand year history and leisure activities all at once in Gyeongju. When to visit? Sightseeing in Gyeongju requires a lot of walking, and since all the attractions mostly are outdoors, I recommend going in the spring when it is not too hot and in the autumn when it is not too cold. And it is best to go when it is not raining. To Gyeongju uh, You can go from Seoul to Gyeongju by a KTX in 2 hours. If you are going from Busan to Gyeongju, it takes about 30 minutes by KTX. By express bus, it takes 3 hours and 30 minutes from Seoul to Gyeongju and 15 minutes from Busan to Gyeongju. Map Gyeongju is slightly bigger than twice the size of Seoul. However, for tour purpose, you will only visit this part where historical sites are gathered and this part where tourist attractions are gathered. Transportation A car is the most comfortable way to travel in Gyeongju. The reason is that Gyeongju is large, so it saves time traveling around with car compared to using public transportation. However, around here, once you get out from the car, you will be walking to see the sights. So keep in mind that it involves a lot of walking even with car. There is no subway in Gyeongju. It is possible to travel by bus, but it takes a lot of time. You can also travel by taxi. However, it might be difficult to grab taxi at some attractions. Also keep in mind that there aren't many places that are open in late night. It may be difficult to use public transportation at night. How to plan? Traveling Gyeongju requires a lot of walking because it is outdoor and attractions are spread out. As I have said earlier, you need a car to travel to Gyeongju comfortably. 
with car planning for three days and two nights or four days and three nights is ideal to see the most popular places. With public transportation, you might want to think about having extra day or two to go around Gyeongju. I will show you the route I took when I visited Gyeongju. I had a car to go around. And it was a cold winter when I visited, so I didn't go for leisure activities around Bomun complex. So I only did historical sightseeing. It was a two-day route in total. On the first day, we started at Bulguksa Temple and visited Sokgram Grotto to see the temples. Afterwards, we took a break at a nearby cafe and visited Taltongne, which is decorated in 70s and 80s theme of Korea. After we checked in, at a hotel and rested for a while and went to Songdong Night Market to eat market street food, then visited Donggung Palace and Wurji Pond. It was under construction when I went, but it is now completed. Lastly, we had dinner at the hotel. On the second day, I went to Gyeongju National Museum. It was very big and there was a lot to see. Afterwards, I visited Daerungwon and Chongmachong Tum and stopped by restaurants and cafe on Hangri Dangil. After we visited Chomsongde, Gyochun Village, and Wurjung Bridge. Then we went to get a massage because our legs were sore. We finished our trip after having dinner. If I were to add an extra day here, I recommend visiting the lake and the theme park at Bomun Complex. Where to stay? I think I can divide the places into two parts. There are many hotels concentrated around Bomun complex. There are various hotels, including luxury hotels and Korean-style pension hotels. Since hotels are concentrated in this area, there are restaurants nearby, which is convenient. The other place is around Hangridangil. There are many low buildings with a Hanok style here. So there are Hanok stays instead of hotels. Every time I go to Gyeongju, I stay at a hotel near Bomun Complex. So I haven't tried a Hanuk stay here, but it will be great for those who want to experience Hanuk. Food. Gyeongju is not famous for its food. I don't think they have representing food here. I know there are Gyeongju bread and many kalguksu places, but they are not that different from other places. So I don't have any specific food to recommend in Gyeongju. Okay, today I went over tips about Gyeongju travel. Gyeongju is a city where you can see Korean history well and it is especially beautiful in spring and autumn with all the cherry blossoms and fall foliage. Uh, you can actually take a day trip from Seoul to just get the feel of Gyeongju if you want. So give it a try if you have time. Also, please watch the last video about places to visit in Gyeongju if you're actually planning to visit Gyeongju for a couple of days. That's it for today. Uh, in the next video, I'll bring you another Korea travel tips. If today's video was helpful, please give it a like and support us by leaving comments and subscribe our channel for more Korea travel tips. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.